supposed to be four wheels and I only got two. It's the place to go when you and your partner want an affordable piece of build-it-yourself furniture that will ultimately test the strength of your relationship. I have good taste in drapes. I wish I died on Iwo Jima and never met you. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the five most interesting facts that we could find about the international home furnishings giant, Ikea. I'm going back for those cute bowls. I swear to God, I will stab you. Number five, Ikea's furniture names are not just gibberish. The Klipsk personal office unit, the Hovatrek home exerbike, or the Yohanishov sofa with the stream green stripe pattern. In North America, at least, many of us have a good time poking fun at the funny sounding names of Ikea products. But Ikea actually has a system for naming those things. For example, sofas and coffee tables are named after locations in Sweden, Ikea's home country, and dining tables and chairs are named after places in Finland. Some furnishings are even titled after occupations, like their bookcases, and bathroom furnishings are named after rivers and lakes. At least this is what many websites report, but I'm calling shenanigans on this one. Shenanigans! 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 Some of these claims line up sometimes, like this lovely sofa that is indeed named after a place in Sweden. But here are 20 tables that are not named after a place in Finland like they're supposed to be, but after a place in Sweden. And here's a bookshelf named not for an occupation, but for a place in Norway. Maybe IKEA followed strict naming guidelines at some point in the past, but as far as I can tell, at the moment, the system is as complex as, hey, let's give everything a Scandinavian name. Well, that settles it. Everybody grab a broom. It's shenanigans. Number four, IKEA is sensitive towards the LGBT community, usually. While socially progressive advertising probably isn't the first thing you think of when you think of IKEA, the company has been both acclaimed and criticized for its inclusion of gay and transgendered people. We have slightly different tastes. I mean, Steve is more into country. It, it frightens me, but at the same time, I have compassion. In 1994, the company ran what's considered to be the very first commercial featuring a gay couple. This was met with terrorist threats towards the company, forcing them to pull the ad. Regardless, they have continued to include gay and lesbian characters in their ad campaigns ever since. They've also featured transgender individuals in their commercials. And while many of the ads are respectful, some are arguably less so. Like a Thai ad in 2013 that brought on accusations that IKEA was perpetuating stereotypes. <laughs> Number three. Part of IKEA's history is pretty sketchy. You know, this place looks great. Oh, thanks, man. It's all uh, IKEA. Did the whole place for $47. While IKEA has certainly cultivated a welcoming image, some of their work history has been less than progressive. Perhaps if you redecorated. Hide the past like they do, under thin, shiny veneer, like an IKEA table. In the past, their items have contained toxic chemicals, like lead in their drinking glasses and formaldehyde in their wooden furniture. If that wasn't enough, IKEA had production facilities in communist-controlled East Germany during the 1980s, and a portion of the employees of these facilities were political prisoners, resulting in the use of forced labor. So I lunch prisoner. I mean, can I help you, valued customer? Apparently, the practice of using forced East German labor to reduce production costs was widespread at the time. IKEA seem fairly transparent about how they've made changes to phase out toxic chemicals in their products, but the use of slave labor is a little bit harder to recover from. I mean, if you'd had a plan, we wouldn't even be in this hellhole. Good. Go wide with it. Go. Number two, the IKEA catalog is distributed more than the Bible. They think of us as a passe, archaic institution. IKEA is bigger than Jesus. Well, maybe not, but maybe. Either way, they certainly are popular. After all, the company uses a whole 1% of the world's wood supply every year for their furniture. And wait, wasn't Jesus the carpenter? Kena. IKEA's world-famous catalog accounts for 70% of their marketing budget and is created in their photo studio, which is the largest in Northern Europe. Now, it's hard to pinpoint exactly how many Bibles are distributed every year, but it's estimated to be around 100 million. The IKEA catalog outdistributes the Bible by an ungodly amount. More than 210 million copies are printed and distributed on an annual basis and are translated into 30 languages across 44 different countries. Number one, IKEA is technically a charitable foundation. As if forced labor wasn't bad enough, IKEA is able to keep their prices so low because they don't pay nearly as much in taxes as their competitors. Because technically, IKEA is a charity organization and the second wealthiest in the world at that. Its corporate structure is incredibly elaborate. But in a nutshell, IKEA is owned by a private company, Inca Holding, which is owned by Dutch nonprofit Stichting Inca Foundation, 
which IKEA's founder established in 1982 as a tax-exempt organization. Since IKEA is owned by a non-profit charitable organization, which are taxed far less than for-profit corporations, they are able to severely skimp on their taxes. Reportedly, they pay as little as 3.5% tax on their profits. IKEA! 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 IKEA. So what do you think about IKEA now? IKEA's rise to go pick up newly single, vulnerable chicks. Do its positive qualities outweigh its questionable ones? For more Bigger Than Jesus Top 10s and The Devil Made Me Do It Top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I had it all, even the glass dishes with tiny bubbles and imperfections, proof that they were crafted by the honest, simple, hard-working, indigenous peoples of Please hold. wherever.